I'm going to read a short passage, and I'm going to try and infer some things um, for clarity. So, in Jeremiah 31, it says, Look, the days are coming. This is a uh, Holman Christian standard something. Uh, it's the only one I got in the car, but I'm <laughs> just going to read it. And hopefully it's not so jacked up that it, I, I don't even know this version. All I know is it's a Bible and I got it in the car. So look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This one will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Um, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will one teach his neighbor or brother saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest of them. This is the Lord's declaration, for I will for I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sin. We've already been forgiven. First of all, the church is appointed teachers. Teachers are there because we are not in this. This is a covenant, a new covenant with the house of Israel. Teachers are to, we are given teachers for the building up of the body, to for training, they they speak the word, the full counsel of God for teach for te to teach us for training, for reproof, for correction. It's part of the New Testament ministry, but in this new covenant. Brothers will not have to teach their neighbors. This is talking about Israel. Israel will all know. They will not have to say, know the Lord. They will all know him. This is the new covenant with the house of Israel. Now, if you can't make distinctions between Old Testament, well, between when God is talking to Israel and when God is talking to the church and you just think it's all for the believer, this is going to cause you some problems because you're going to reject teaching. And what would be the point of having teachers? Why would God do that if everyone, if this is for us? In Zechariah, if I can find it, I'll read it. In Zechariah, yeah, if I can find it. It talks about how, there we go, it talks about the, Israel's future. I will erase the names of the idols from the land. They will no longer be remembered or remove the prophets and the unclean spirit from the land. If a man still prophesies, his father and mother who bore him will say to him, You cannot remain alive because you have spoken falsely in the name of the Lord. Well, here it says Yahweh. But when he prophesies, his father and mother who bore him will pierce him through. On that day, every prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. They will not put on a hairy cloak in order to deceive. He will say, I'm not a prophet. I work the land for a man purchased me as a servant since my youth. If someone asks him, what are the wounds? This version's all jacked up. This version's all jacked up. This does not read at all like what the King James says. Either way, those are the verses that I kind of wanted to wanted to point to. They were close enough to kind of get the point of what I'm trying to say. If we're in this, 
people should be speared for prophesying or saying they have visions. There is no prophet. We're not in this covenant. And yes, people do. But in that day, Israel will not need anybody to teach them. And we are called to a much higher calling than the nation of Israel. Visions and dreams and prophesyings and even knowledge, there will not be any need for it. We will be one with Jesus Christ. He will be in us and we will be the fullness of Christ, Christ being the fullness of God. And it will be so natural and so free there won't be any, it even says knowledge will pass away. That's such a strange thing. Tongues will pass away, healing, all, all, everything, all these things. And But Christ will be all in all. If Israel is going to be spearing their own children for prophesying, That's just the earthly understanding. That's 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 how far they're going to be removed from the situation that we're even in right now. It's going to be very different for Israel with the new covenant, where they there will they will know the Lord. They'll teach the Gentiles, but they won't have to teach each other. They will all know Him. Where will we be? Ruling and reigning with Christ, being in him and him being in us. And nobody's going to talk about any rapture dream or any vision that they ever had in this life. That stuff's going to pass away. It's not going to... Really? No, it'll, it'll be... As for right now, the only, the only thing that... If I... And I'm not trying to defend myself. I'm not on... I'm not on defense uh if if i ever had a dream or a vision and i've had some ones that ended up just causing confusion and i just had to say you know what i'm throwing it out i don't need that and i'm not going to dwell on it because i had a rapture dream that i didn't recognize uh <laughs> it's just ridiculous throw it out don't make no sense i don't need it I've got the word, and the word tells me when I see him, I will be like him. So, my dream doesn't match up. Get that garbage out of here. I don't need it. And even if I did have a dream, there's. I'm very careful about taking the title as who. In Ezekiel 33, it talks about watchmen, a watchman. The title watchman is given to Ezekiel. And God says, I have appointed you as a watchman over the whole house of Israel. He's a watchman for Israel. That is not something that we've been called to. And if you keep reading... You know, I will require your blood. I'll, you, I will require their blood of you and your blood and everybody's blood. And uh, uh-uh. no way. There's only one blood required, and it's been offered. And I have put my faith in that blood, and it has made me spotless clean. And I am free to approach God based on the blood that has been offered. Jesus' blood shed on the cross. There ain't no blood required. The blood's been offered. Now we watch because we are children of the day. And we, we're we not to be drunk like those who sleep in the night. We're not to be like the, we're not to be like the world in the way that they are drunk and asleep. But we are to be sober and awake. And that comes from Focusing on the gospel and on the grace of God and keeping my conscience saturated in the blood 
and in the water of the word, which cleanses me. So, I think that, you know, does the world need us to warn them about the judgment that's coming? They don't. They don't. We're ambassadors for Christ for a ministry of reconciliation. They already, they, the Spirit testifies of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin because they believe not. And John says, if, if you be, whoever believes on the Son has life, but he who believeth not, the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on people because they do not believe in Jesus Christ. And that is what's storing up wrath. It's not because they don't know the rapture's coming. It's not because they're not in fear of God. It's because they don't believe on Jesus for the remission of their sins. They don't believe the gospel. They don't trust in what he did, and they treat it as an unclean thing. They treat his blood as an unclean thing, and they treat his work as some kind of unsatisfactory death, and his life currently as unable to accomplish which that which he sets out to do. It, it, it's all blasphemy all the way through, every point. They, they don't believe the simple gospel message. And the simple gospel message permeates all of that. But the simple gospel is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again. And the world is storing up wrath because they refuse to believe that. So the Holy Spirit testifies of sin, righteousness, and judgment. They are aware that they're not righteous. They're aware that they have sinned because they don't believe in him. And they're aware of judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. And you can see it in all of our movies and everything. And so they already have that. They already have that. They're aware of sin, the fact that they're not righteous, and that judgment is coming. But the goodness of God leads men to repentance. And so, in the ministry of reconciliation to the world, it's not that we need to focus so much on the judgment to come and and being a being a watchman and telling people you're going to you're about to be judged, but instead presenting Jesus Christ as a as a Passover lamb. He has accomplished everything. Put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. He loves you. He showed you by how he died for you. There's no greater love than that. So, I don't, and as for, you know, everything that we know, and even the stuff that we, we prophesy in part, and even the dreams or the visions or things that might add, um, I, I just see it as adding, adding um, maybe a visual or, you know, even a snapshot in time to say, you know, this is kind of what I was like wanted to communicate, and the idea of, you know, how great the grace of God is, or how great His love is for us, or how joyful it will be, or how joyful salvation is, and how just to try to grab on more to the height and depth and width and length of the love of God in Christ. Those things will pass away, although they might serve a purpose for now. Those things, nobody's going to remember their rapture dreams at the Bema seat. Nobody's going to be thinking about uh, a vision that they had. Uh, I, won't. <laughs> I won't. That's going to be long gone. I I'll forget about it, but what will abide is the word. His word does not return void. His word remains forever. The word is precious and far more valuable than 
even everything that we could use to describe it, examples, um, you know, any teaching tool that we use or any method that we use pales in comparison to the weight and the, and the value of the word. Because the word is Christ. And when he's working himself into us by his word, that is far better. Far better. And will be something that I do believe he will reward us. Just for the words that he spoke to us and the things that he put into us. The words spoken from him. It's him working himself into us. And what can we say but it was truly of grace. The people who... They're, they're, I mean, it's just so kooky to think about people who think that at the Bema seat... What do they expect? I warned you and I warned... Or at the white throne judgment? I warned... All, give me a break. There's no way. There's no way. Ain't nobody going to remember none of that. And... Is there anything wrong? There's nothing wrong with preaching about hell or talking about hell or teaching about hell. It's it's the word. But the world is already aware it's been judged because the ruler of this world has been judged. So the world is being convicted of that anyways. Unless God's not doing his job. And I think he can do it just fine. Now, can we bring people into clarity about what does it mean? Absolutely. I can tell people, hey, God will execute his judgment on anybody who does not find refuge and safety in Jesus. And Jesus is absolutely safe. That's safe. You're gonna be, you get in Jesus, you're going to be safe. And Jesus is going to get in you, and you're double safe. And the Father is in Jesus, so you're triple safe. He'll seal you with his spirit, so you're quadruple safe. Okay, that's that's all I got. All right. There's so many... I think 90% of everything that we... There's so much that's passing away. There's a lot that's passing away. It's ready to pass away. But God's word abides forever. And that is what counts. And it's just going to be fun. And we're just going to be. We will be in him. And he will be in us. And it's going to be wild fun. It's already fun. But it's going to be wild fun. See ya.